So what's up people in this video we gonna talk about 100 thieves so 100 thieves released baby j and echoes from their valorant roster this is one of the fastest roster changes in valorant history on monday after getting 13-0 by the guard in the vct stage 1 challengers main event 100 thieves quickly removed their two newest players from the roster and just after this 100 thieves announced their replacements and the new replacement for the team is bang and jc stanny both of these players attempted to make it to vct stage 1 challengers with their respect teams but neither could close the gap and instead of this they would be invited to the main stage of the event under 100 thieves on loan from those teams even baby j and nate Shot reacted on this matter and here's the clip the announcement uh, regarding our valorant roster obviously i know it probably comes as a surprise that we're moving away from baby j and Eccles. first and foremost i just want to say thank you to both those players there is never ever under any circumstance where I want there to be a situation where their involvement with our organization is as short-lived as this one. And I think they're both incredibly talented players and clearly have a future in professional Valorant. And I think they'll land on their feet, or at least that's my hope, not only professionally, but personally. I think their contribution should not go uh, overlooked. And I really just want to say thank you for them and the time that they invested into our organization. I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding why we made this decision. It's, it's, it's tough to say that this wasn't a results-based decision, but it really wasn't. Uh, you know, obviously a disappointing loss yesterday to the guard. Cloud9 got the better of us, uh, beating us 2-0 last week. And I think a lot of people just don't have the ability to look deeper into what causes issues with teams and rosters in a lot of cases in my experience of competing sometimes it really doesn't come down to the talent and it doesn't come down to the results it comes down to the culture the mindset and the philosophy and how the game should be approached and call of duty was one thing it's 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 a, it's a little bit more singular in how the way the game is played there's really only a couple right ways and a lot of wrong ways to play the game but with valorant with all the utility and the composition of agents i feel like you can really get lost in the weeds and how the game should be played and how well, you approach each match and each map of that you I'll, pa I'll pause them there there are many ways to win this game i mean as you saw guard 13 on us these guys played fucking like sage and shit and they on defense and they quite literally they they had known we don't play a duelist so they counterpicked us instead of k they picked sage on defense and they shit on us there's a lot of ways to win the game uh i don't know if you get lost and i don't know if you get lost in the right way there's just you have to learn how to adapt i know that was a big thing for me is i had to learn to adapt like as a anchor, I my way of adapting was just moving the fuck out of the site. I couldn't anchor because I had a good execute. But then C9 had a good execute no matter where they went. So I wasn't actually adapting to win. I was just adapting not to lose. You know what I mean? Adapting to win would have been more like, you know, a are darting half while I'm going to have my teammate break it or I'll hold it while my teammate plays off my utility. So like... De it's definitely not that I I got person would get lost. Uh, I I think I had learned a lot from the short time I was playing with the team, and I'd realized like you have to adapt in this game, and you have to be ready for a million scenarios. You can prep for the, you know like the two months we did, but team pulls out Sage because they have CT side and we have no duelist. Like it's tough. It's tough scenes. You're gonna fucking lose no matter what team you are. Like not even fucking. Yeah, not even the demon. Yay! Actually, I I take that back. Yay! Yay! Probably could win that, <laughs> but like it's hard. It's a, it's a hard side for anyone. That's all. That's all I'm trying to say is like. So, I agree, but disagree with that point. Uh, but that's what you so. end up competing on. So, I would say this was a decision that we felt was necessary for the success or the potential opportunity for us to qualify uh, in the future of 2022 in all the tournaments that are to come. And the format is just grueling, to be honest with you. Only two teams go to Iceland. And basically, if you don't qualify, your year is done besides some of the you know tier two or tier three tournaments that you can play in 
across uh, different tournament platforms and websites and, and organizations. So it's, it's really make or break. And we just felt like we didn't want to wait out the inevitable. Uh, we just felt like the roster and the players and the way that they meshed just didn't fit well together. And so, you know, you got to take a big swing. And so we're excited to welcome Bang and JC Stanny uh, to the roster. And we hope that we can find success. I'm really sorry to the community that's looking for a better long-term solution. I know that it's never fun dealing with turbulence and the rosters and, you know, it's never fun to not have confidence in the organization that is, you know, fielding these players, but we, we, we're, we're trying to win and uh, we never want that to come at the cost of, you know, recycling players and, and, and changes for the best find some success. So thanks for listening. Thanks for understanding. And uh, hopefully that made sense. Y'all take it easy. I'm trying to be unbiased. Um, I try to understand... Talk your shit. No. I try to understand both sides. I'm so. Uh, I'll tell you right now. I'm so unbelievably pissed. A lot of things. I actually like disagreed with. I. I. So the one thing I do believe that was true was that it was not a performance based uh, decision. I think this had been in the works, to be honest, because they were very fast at screaming. Uh, for some reason, I think this would have happened like the moment we lost. Like I don't know. I I think they had this backup plan uh, low key in the works, which doesn't make sense. Um. So yeah, I believe him on the thing on the fact that it wasn't performance based. I do. The like. The w the way to win thing I don't agree with. I think this game is very unique. There's a w a lot of ways to win this game, and the best way the best teams that are going to consistently f uh, win are going to be the ones that are the best at adapting. And even then, those best teams will still have their days where they get cheesed or like the other team just plays better. Like. The the team the the game is like very hard to stay consistently consistent in, and the only way to like, you know, counteract that is just be fucking really good at adapting and ahead of the meta. Like, do your homework on other teams and like, you know what I mean. So I don't agree with like being lost in the game. With like, I don't ever feel lost in the game, in my opinion. I I I think. I mean, what, the only time I felt really fucking bad about losing was against C9 on Breeze. I felt like that was purely my fault because I could not anchor a fucking site. But they're really good. Like, I, I didn't never experienced the way they executed a site. And so it opened up a lot of my eyes. Like, hey, like, instead of, like, moving around and stuff, like, bro, I got to straight up just, like, learn how to anchor this shit real time. Like, I got to see what they're throwing like adapt to have like a teammate help me call someone over that can help me like in the moment because like i'm just playing out the lose instead of playing to win and like that was the wrong way to play for sure but well, there there definitely isn't well, one way yeah, yeah, yeah there definitely isn't right. one way to win this game there's so many ways and everyone's opinion on the team is so unbelievably important like my role as a sentinel is just as important as how peter wants how, my role how i want to play defense and set up and anchor a site is just as important how peter wants to entry a site if he wants to stop and slow down to op or like and like adam's role like if he wants to lurk or like hit like hit fast with his smokes or fake out with his like everyone's role is so unbelievably important and everyone's opinion matters. 
because only that person knows how well they can play like their agent like you know what i mean they know what they're capable of so like everyone's opinion matters you can't have like a dictatorship i i feel like you do have to uh, you have you do have to be able to uh agree on one idea like freeze time we're talking about the round like all right like this is the idea this is what we're gonna do right or wrong we do it together we can win like that that's how how it has to be at the end of the day and i never like i don't think i ever had like a disagreement about that but i do feel like my uh do you feel like my opinions were a little bit like so what do you guys think about it? Please comment down below and for daily news video, please subscribe this channel.